Hi guys. In our conversation on beauty, I kind of, you know, the whole beauty is truth thing, I kind of made a pitch for realism and against romanticism. And certainly that was um, when we think of, you know, Charles Baudelaire uh, in his, you know, late 19th century moment, that was a, a real argument. But certainly realism versus romanticism, if you will, is a pendulum. And if you think about, you know, your own interests, if you had a dial that went from zero realism, 100 romanticism to 100 zero, and you got to pick, you'd probably put that dial, I don't know where, but you probably wouldn't put it at either end. It'd be somewhere in between, right? So since we kind of beat up on romanticism a little bit, uh, we should take a minute to, to give romanticism its turn. So I guess first, let's you know, what is realism? We've kind of talked about it in our beauty conversation, but here's a couple definitions. Realism, the attitude or practice of accepting a situation as it is and being prepared to deal with it accordingly. The summit was marked by a new mood of realism. The quality or fact of representing a person, thing, or situation accurately or in a way that is true to life. In art and literature, the movement or style of representing familiar things as they actually are often contrasted with idealism. While realism in art is often used in the same context as naturalism, implying a concern to depict or describe accurately and objectively, it also suggests a deliberate rejection of conventionally beautiful or appropriate subjects in favor of sincerity and a focus on simple and unidealized treatment of contemporary life. Specifically, the term is applied to late 19th century movement in French painting and literature. In painting, people that we looked at, like Courbet, and in literature, Balzac, Stendhal, Flaubert. Okay. What about romanticism? Romanticism is a movement in the arts and literature that originated in the late 18th century, emphasizing inspiration, subjectivity, and the primacy of the individual. Romanticism was a reaction against the order and restraint of classicism and neoclassicism, and a rejection of the rationalism that characterized the Enlightenment. In music, the period embraces much of the 19th century, with composers including Schubert, Schumann, Liszt, Wagner... Poets exemplifying the movement include um, Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Shelley, Keats. Uh, romantic painters uh, are diverse, and they include William Blake, uh, this guy I keep not talking about, Turner, Delacroix, Goya. Okay, so here's just a couple thoughts that a few uh, culture theorists have on this topic. So we'll start with the great culture theorist Buffy Summers uh, and her 1997 observation. Um, so in the Halloween episode, before she got this uh, somewhat more provocative thing, Willow was intending just to throw a sheet over herself and go as a ghost, and Buffy was upset and said, you're missing the whole point of Halloween, Will. It's come as you aren't, night. Um, Lewis Carroll. So if you recall, at the end of Alice's Adventures, the Queen of Hearts is raining all these cards down on Alice's head. It's pretty bad. Alice wakes up and she's actually been sleeping. Her head's in her sister's lap. And when she wakes up, she tells her sister all this, uh, all the adventures she's had. And at the very end, it's actually her sister who closes her eyes and imagines. And so she sat on, Alice's sister, so she sat on with closed eyes and half believed herself in wonderland, though she knew she had but to open them again and all would change to dull reality. And finally, here from Dale Wasserman's Man of La Mancha. So this is not Don Quixote by Cervantes. This is a, a much more recent play, and this photo is from the film version uh, that Dale Wasserman wrote about Cervantes' characters. So um, toward, pretty close to the end, he tells us, I've been a soldier and a slave. I've seen my comrades fall in battle or die more slowly under the lash in Africa. I've held them in my arms at the final moment. These were men who saw life as it is, yet they died despairing. No glory, no brave last words, only their eyes filled with confusion, questioning why. I don't think they were wondering why they were dying, but why they had ever lived. When life itself seems lunatic, who knows where madness lies? 
to surrender dreams, this may be madness. To seek treasure where there is only trash, too much sanity may be madness. But maddest of all, to see life as it is and not as it should be. Okay, so maybe you can use discussion to set your own sort of dial of how much, what percentage of realism versus romanticism, you know, you might like in your life. Thanks a lot.